morning i hope that you're there we're early to the party just doing a little sound check welcome to the shack shack my name is barbara gray and it's great to have your company is anybody there paul could you just let me know because we've changed the way we do this and now i need a checker if you could just let me know paul that we're uh, we're on track that would be great uh i probably see trouble is we can't check until we've gone live which is a little bit of a monkey so paul please let me know that the sound is good that'd be great and is anybody in the building with us let's have a look okay off we go good morning everyone stephanie can you hear me steph yes everybody's there good let me know if you can't hear me wonderful barbara from michigan isn't it lovely that we can spread our our a friendship across the pond. Grace went back this morning and my daughter, she went back to New York this morning. So we were up at the, the crack of dawn and Dave got her off to Heathrow. Hopefully he got through okay with all the, um, the demonstrations and what have you that are going on. It's very, very disruptive down here in the Southeast at the moment, but they do have a point. I'm not sure I agree with the way that they're making their point, but they do have a point. So there you go. That's just my opinion. And um, welcome to the Shack Shack. Safe, happy and creative. Stay home and craft. And of course, during lockdown, this was um, this was crucial for me and for you, you know, just to 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 stay sane and redirect our thinking every morning. Can you imagine we used to do this every single morning? And so now we're, I don't know, we're back to normal? I don't think so. I was up in London at the weekend. It was anything but normal. Um, but there you go. If this is the new normal, we're in trouble, people. <laughs> but you know what? The good news is we made it. So far, we're still here. Hey, a day at a time. Yes, we are. And it was great to hang out with Grace in London on Saturday and, and our darling friend Sam, Sam Crow. It was good to see her. She got a flight down from Newcastle. And uh, so that was lovely. It was good to catch up, you know, really good to catch up, give her a hug. And then on Sunday, if you read the blog, you know, we went to Olympia to the big trade show there. It's called Top Draw, which is... Um, primarily stationary but it's kind of diversified into gift wear as well so there was some pottery which was wonderful yeah that was cool that was cool and um yeah it was nice to be it was strange i hadn't been on the underground or on a train you know since last march um and before that um but it was okay it was okay people were respectful people were respectful and london wasn't as busy as it usually is it wasn't it wasn't it just wasn't as packed. We went to the VNA. There was there weren't so many people when we were at Olympia. There weren't so many people. There weren't so many. There weren't so many people in the streets. You know, because we were right in the middle of it. Um, yeah, it was all right actually. We kept our masks masks on, as you do. And the sun was shining. There you go. You make the best of what you've got. When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Isn't that the truth? So, so yeah, it was nice. And it was lovely to spend a week with Grace, you know, and she got to see her granddad and he's doing really well. So yeah, it is all right, you know, it's okay. A day at a time, we're getting there. Sad to see her go, sad to see her go. Glad to have been able to spend a week with her, you know. And how are you at home? How are you dealing with things? Are you okay? Are you okay? It'll be all right, it'll be all right. We the doodling. And so let's have a look. It must be 10 o'clock. Let's get started. Welcome to the Shack Shack, my fellow shackers and doodlers. And um, and this week, I don't know if you remember last week, we 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 did this hole. Isn't that cool? So we were we were we started on a hole. And and for, if you're if you're new to the Shack Shack, I'll just explain. This is a stamp board that I'm using here. 
Uh, oh, Paul's in the building with you. Our Paul Church, lovely Paul is in the building with you. Not with me, but with you. So if you've got any questions, then of course, he's your man. And if you're looking for anything like stamp board or pens or pencils, if there's anything you need, then of course, Paul's your man. He will give you the links. Um, but having said that, to be honest, all you need to join in is a pen and a piece of paper. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so here we are. I can see all these names all flying through. It's great to see you. It's great to have your company. And no, it's not over yet, folks. I agree. I just saw that fly through. It's not over yet, folks. It sure is not. But you know what? It is what it is. And today we're in the shack and we're doodling a hole. <laughs> and it's a good one. So let's have a look where we are. If you're new to the shack, then perhaps you, we'll just do a little recap so you know how we arrived at this really, I, I really like this optical illusion. Actually, if we go in that camera, it looks even better, but doesn't it? Looks real 3D. I know, look, it's good, isn't it? You could really imagine that you're going in the hole there. Do you see, do you, do you know those, sometimes you see those pavement artists, you know, the optical illusions, unbelievable. You know, and where have I seen amazing pavement artists? London, New York, San Francisco, and uh, Munich. Oh, yeah, there was one in Munich. Amazing. And you walk, you walk towards it and you think that there are steps going down on, in the pavement. And when you get there, it's as flat as a tack. So clever. I, that fascinates me, that stuff. So, so let's have a look. This is a kind of a baby version of that, isn't it? Um, let's have a look at how we arrived at this. So we actually started with our bauble shapes, didn't we? So a couple of weeks ago, and this is always on a, on a Thursday now at 10 o'clock in the morning. And you can go back, uh, on our, uh, on our recordings on YouTube. So if you wanted to kind of catch, play catch up, what we did was we took our uh, baubles, didn't we? First of all, and then we drew little scenes in them. And then we changed, we changed the writing on them. So you could say like peace, peace and joy, or you could say uh, happy Christmas, or from our house, our house to your, from our home to your home. We put another little house in there. So that was quite nice. Peace on earth. That was a good one. So that was what we did the first, the first time. And then when we'd finished doing that. We, took, we went to the circle one. Here we go. Let me just push this up a bit. We went to the circle one. And, um, and what we see, that's, that's, for example, using this droplet one. See, you could do the same thing. And we took a circle, didn't we? And that's where we ended up doing this. But if we go, see, so what we did was we took the circle, drew it, and then we made... We made um, like a like a flower, didn't we? And then we joined up the flower, so it became like a scallop. Look it up; it's quite good. I enjoyed this. And then we transferred it to stamp board, which is nice because it's just a you could frame it, couldn't you? That's the thing. You put that in a little frame, a little sharp. And then what we did was we transferred it. On from the tracing paper like that. So we ended up with that. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. And then we we started colouring it in. So I've done. So we didn't. We did it as far as that. And then I said for homework, why don't you try colouring in the black bits? And then today we're going to do this bit, the shading. And that's why it's a little bit shady in here today. Okay. But I left a couple open here just so that you could see kind of where we're going with it. Un, deux, trois. It's easy once you deconstruct it, isn't it? All right, so that's that. That's that. That's where we came from. Right, okay. Let me just put this stuff away so I know where to find it when I'm looking for it next time. Now. Let's have a look. And I thought I'd just do these three because it's uh, it's also a question of what do you use to colour in the bits, you know. So we've got different pens, really. Let's have a look. We've got, um, what did I use? You can use all different ones. 
uh, I had them in front of me just now because I was catching up. Right, so we've got these ones. That's good. Let me just put my other glasses on so I can see more. All the better to see you with. Right, we've got the micron pens, haven't we? We're gonna, we can use those to do the black. We can use the Posca pen. That They're nice, the black Posca pens. We called them. We're getting some more in stock because we ran out. And they're like hen's teeth, these bloody things, these blinking things. <laughs> Sorry. Right. And then, um, so we've got the Posca pens, we've got them. And then, of course, we've also got our Faithfuls, which are our own Perga colours. And they work really nicely too. So it's whichever one you've got, really. You know what? And if you haven't got any of this, use a biro or something. Use anything just to black out. I've done all this with a Posca pen, so I'll continue with that. And see, the idea is that you're actually, it's the flower part that you're doing. Not the, not the, it, it's the outie, the bit that's coming out. And we made a line, because it looks like a kind of a, here. We made a line. Hang on, let me get this going. Let me just get my Posca pen going. I may have to use that. No, it's fine. Right. And so we made a little line here just to create. Let's have a look. Actually, it's a bit higher up. And then we could always we can always reduce that line. This is a kind of an optical illusion, like where the, if you like, where the light is hitting it. And then this one's going to come round here. See, so I'm just bringing it round. So I know not to go in that area there. That'll do. Yeah, it wasn't too hard, was it? <laughs> Let me come in a bit closer. Can you hear me all right? Everybody happy? Are you happy? Happy as we can be, eh? Sometimes you just got to fake it to make it. Sometimes you just got to fake it to make it. I was talking to my dad this morning, bless him, and um, we were talking about looking backwards and looking forwards. And, um, and he... Here we go. Let me just fill this bit in. I think I get it from him, which I'm, I'm very grateful for. I don't dwell in the past. And he said the same thing. You know, he said, you just got to look forward. Um, so, I mean, he had quite a traumatic time in the hospital there. But he, he doesn't think about it. And we both agreed, you know. We can recall it in a nanosecond what it's like. In, a, in an elderly care ward or in an intensive care ward. He remembers, and so do I. I shall never forget it. But, and he was there 24-7. I was just there most days for a few hours, you know. But he said, I just don't, I don't dwell on what's past. It serves no purpose. It doesn't, it would just depress me, he said. So I look to today and I look at the sunshine and I look out of the window and your mum's hanging the laundry out and all is well. And it's it's not that you're you're in denial or anything when you do that, I think. I think you just it makes sense. And and I've always been like that, you know. Something terrible happens. I'm not ignoring it. I just choose not to dwell on it, you know? Because I think that leads to resentment, which leads to bitterness, which leads to anger. And it's just better to just, and fear. And life is such a, yeah, as we know now, so precious. And so, so short, really. Why spend it? thinking about things that you can't change because they've already happened. Why waste precious time thinking about the past? You know? Don't make sense, does it, really? Certainly not awful things in the past. It's nice to think about nice memories. You know, you know what I mean. And so this is the whole idea of what we're doing here is this mindful process, is this, is this 
focusing on right now, the moment. I've got to really concentrate that I don't go over those lines, you see. So that keeps me right focused on the moment, on now, which is, I guess, the definition of, of mindfulness, isn't it? I mean, we ban that word around. But that's what it means, I think. All right. So is yours looking like that as well now? Hey? I do think what I'm going to do, because I can, I'm going to take a thinner one. What have we got there? Eight. These are so good, these micron pens. Just go easy with them. You know what I was saying? Uh, I've said this many times. Don't press too hard. You don't need to. So this is a number one. This is a number eight. That's quite a good one. I think I'm going to go with a number one. So there are loads in the pack, aren't there? No, I've got a pack here of them. I've got seven of them in the pack. So you've got the number 05 is the really thinnest one, and then it goes right up to number eight, which is the kind of the filler one, isn't it? Let's have a look. But what I want to do is do a couple of those. I want to do this here. Let's have a look. I'm going to put those dots in carefully now, those circles. Put them in now. So it's easier to do them now than later. Oh, bit, not very round grey. Not to worry, because we're going to make them blacker as well, aren't we? So I can round that up a little bit. Have I got the right glasses on? <laughs> I am rubbish at this. Look, do you know what? <laughs> Look. One, two, three, four. <laughs> and the day madness as well. <laughs> and I still can't see. It's all right. It's great getting old. <laughs> right. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Now, I've taken them off. I can't see what I've got. Let me take these ones. These are the only prescription ones. All the rest are just cheap. Oh, no, they're prescription ones. Uh, they're I think I'm going to go with my Dame Edna's. When in doubt, put the... Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I can see what I'm doing. Right, that'll do. And then I might make another little dot there. Mm. And I thought I might do the same thing over it. It looked like it deserved it. One, two, what do I think? A bit smaller. But I'm ignoring what I'm drawing. What? Why do I even bother drawing it? Look, it's got nothing to do with what I've drawn. That'll do. Now, what I did differently on this one compared to this one, because I could change it, but then I thought, have I done the right thing on this? I didn't do the black line on here. You see? Did, did you? Did you? <laughs> did you interrogative do the black line there i decided to leave it and then decided to see what it looks like whether it looks more like um like an optical illusion if you don't do it i thought well we can always add it afterwards can't we so i'm going to go with an hb pencil to start with and this is what now they're too you know what let's get that one there. they're too that's better I'm going to use an HB pencil and I'm just going to get that, this shade in here. This is where we're going to put the shade. See here? Like that. So I'm just going to come in here and let's see. It's, it's quite, um, it's quite an exercise in shading, isn't it? Right from the top. There you go. And you're just going to come in like from there. Like that. See if that works. What do I think? So we can do it like that and just stay away from the edge a little bit and go down the middle. So we're really, if we do one like this, just down the middle, what do we think? All right, see? You could use grey pencils as well. If you've got the old polychromos, you know, the grey pencils, that's quite cool. But I'm going to build it up like this. And I, I think what I'm going to do is do one and then see whether I like it. Right, and then this one, we're going to fly up the middle like that. 
So we start there, okay, start in the hole and then flick up the center of the, the, the bit that's white now. Lightly does it. See if that works. Mm. Not bad. Right? Up the middle. And then down the, down here from the middle, except this one, we're going that way. Like that. I think this is going to look cool. Right, see, that goes down there. And this is going to get darker. Can get bolder. See, from an optical illusion, you can see exactly what I'm playing at here, can't you? So I want to do it in pencil, and then I wonder where have I put those grey pencils? Let's, let me let me get it wrong first before. Let me just not get it wrong. Let me try it out first. What am I saying? <laughs> the the polychromos. There's a we've got a set. I'm, loads of you have already got them. Yeah. Polychromos, we, we did a kind of a, a greys and golds and silver set, didn't we, Paul? See? So it's, these are softer than, than the HB. So they work quite well. All right. Look, this is going to look great. And I'm just now, I'm edging up towards the, yeah, this is going to look good. All right. It's easier with the grey pencils if you've got them. With an HB, it's it's a little bit more of a challenge. Then you go, so we could get the light colour in first. I'm just going to do one to completion, and then we can whiz around. Although it's not really a whizzing job, this, is it? It's a real, see, now I'm going in with a darker one. Which one did I use first? I heard you. I heard you. Cold grey three. Cold grey six. A light grey and a dark grey. And if you wanted to play it safe, go light, medium, dark. Okay. I'm going to go like that. Like that. Just, it's all about pressure. How hard do you press? See? So I can get really dark there and I can get really dark in there now. There. But it, I, I would prefer it to, um, rather than just press hard to get the depth, Add layers of colour. I think that always works better. There, see? Like that. Now, I wonder... I think this is going to look good, you know. And I was... Just let me try something out. I just want to try something. No, I don't think so. I don't think it would be like there. Let me just try it. Just see if I took a little tiny bit out of there. You know, that might be an idea, but we will we could always sort that out at the end. I mean, one of the best things about this is that we can we can add it and we can take it away. Right, okay. So now what are you using? Are you gonna use pencil or are you gonna use the grey polychromos? Hey? Okay? I think I'll go with the pencil to get the depth in. Right, here we go. Pencil and then up we go. We're gonna do a pencil here just to get that curve going, and then behind those baubles. There you go. This will be good. Hmm. And then zoom down the middle. Just get the base in, hey? Are you doodling? Are you doodling along with me? Or are you, are you just watching and drinking tea or coffee, huh? What are you doing? What are you doing craft-wise? Are you making Christmas cards? Are you journaling? I haven't been in my pottery studio for a little while now because it's been so busy. We did that TV show, the, the TV weekend, didn't we, Paul? God, that was chaos. And we, we did that, which was immensely successful. Really, all the hard work paid off because we were preparing for that one for for months, really. And um, that was on the telly, wasn't it, on the craft store? So we did that, and then we came back from that. And really, the day late, a day later, Grace turned up. And then we just had a load of catching up to do, and you know, I'm still on daughter duty, so I was doing that as well. And then, 
So now what we've got here, and then today Grace has gone again. Then we went up to London at the weekend. So it's been a really busy, very busy few weeks. What am I saying? It's been a very, very busy 18 months, really. I'm going to have to have a little bit of a regroup and a tidy up. Have you got a lot of spiders in your house at the moment? We've got some serious size of them. They're like tarantulas. Um, have you got them in your house at the moment as well? I mean, I know it's a spider season, isn't it? But they're enough. <laughs> they're really big at the moment. I, I, I think they're quite big at the moment. Seem larger than usual. Maybe that's global warming as well. We're getting huge spiders. So they don't they don't die anymore. They just keep growing. So yeah, we've got some seriously I mean we live in an old house, an old house. So that might have something to do with it. How's your shading going? Yeah, because that's what we're doing today. It's all about the shading. Let's just get these, see, just like, like this, like, like a pendulum. I'm not pressing hard. I'm just getting the shadow in, so I've got an idea of where I'm going. Pendulum down the centre. That will do. And then we can get that lovely scallop effect, I think. Have a look. Be good. If you're coming in over the top of the artwork, right, then it's always good to cover it up when you're so that you don't lean on the artwork. There you go. You can do that much more easily, can't you? If you can see it there, is that better? Is that better, or does it look better? Can't see it so well on that camera, can you? Hey, okay. let's go back to that one. Right, excuse my head. See, so that you just keep going and going and going and going, it'll get darker. Let's just get these in first. And the little white bobs. There you go, go around them. Optical illusions, eh? I like working on the stamp board, I must say. It's very, it's very, um, it's lovely to draw on, it's lovely to doodle on, it's lovely to do ink work on, it takes paint. It, it's just really nice texture have you got some have you tried it it's really good yes see it's already coming together so you're getting that that top edge that's going to be darker and then in the middle going to come out flick let's just do a bit of that from the center because the middle is going to be really dark look see very dark. So we get an undercoat down there, can't we? Let's do a bit of lead pencil work or grey pencil, whatever you fancy. You cannot be saying, I can't do it because I haven't got any polychromo. Bog standard pencil. And I always think, if you can do it with a pencil, see, this is more difficult, really, to get the right shading with one lead pencil than if you had various degrees of greyness, isn't it? 50 shades of grey and all that. Hmm? Did you read those books? <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the fastest read ever. Quite a repetitive read. <laughs> right. I'm reading, um, I'm rereading actually at the moment. Um, I don't know if you've heard of him. Robertson Davies is a Canadian writer. Fantastic. And at the moment, I'm going back over the Deptford trilogy. He wrote se several trilogy. If you're looking for a really, really class read, um, his name is Robertson Davies, D-A-V-I-E-S. Um, I'm on the Deptford trilogy at the moment, which is great. Then there's the Salterton trilogy, which I'm looking forward to. And then there's the Cornish trilogy. So there are there are three different trilogies. You've got to make sure you get them in the right order, otherwise it's a bit weird. You know when you – I've done that before where I've gone for a trilogy and I've read book two before I've read book one and it's a bit daft really. 
So make sure you get the right one. If you're looking for a good read or a good listening read, the um, the narrator's really good as well. He's got a lovely, a lovely, a very appropriate um, a very appropriate voice and accent. It just works really well. There you go. Let's get a bit darker up here now. So Paul says, Zara wipes the window sills with a lemon wipe. Ruth uses peppermint oil and Judith scatters horse chestnuts around the house. And that gets, is that, that gets rid of the spiders, does it? Well, that's good to know, hey? Because they're definitely out in force at the moment. <laughs> yeah, look, it's coming now, isn't it? Isn't that funny how it comes together? That one looks a bit weird, though. There, see how it needs to be up higher? So that's easily done. There you go. In we go. And I think this one also could do with being a little bit... There, now we're getting there. Cool, huh? See, on that one, see the difference? That one's got a black line, and now we're trying it without the black line. We're just using grey pencils, see if we can get the same element of grayscale. I wanted to see if it looked better, and I'm thinking that it might. Right, we're going back in with the grey pencil. So now I'm going in with the grey. Light grey, and flicking down. So... good to have your company. I know that a lot of people now aren't able to join us live because they have to go back to work, got other things to do. But I also know that most of our little family of shackers, they come in later in the evening. I know because I see the comments and I see uh, we can track, you see, we track. Not because we're obsessive like that, but if you're doing something, you want to know that it's actually working, don't you? Hey, that people are actually still enjoying it or taking advantage or using, you know, the the platform. Cool, that looks nice. See that grey? That's the one. This is starting to look really good now. So, got a bit of a chisel going. See, it's a bit of a softer. Here we go. So, chisel. See how it's coming now. How are you doing with it? I love doing this sort of stuff. I find it very, very therapeutic. Very therapeutic indeed. Especially on board, it seems to, it's like a very nice quality. See, this is a nice coaster bit big but I could laminate it hmm? um, I could do this edge as well I could do all this yet there you go bit of depth down there nice who did the pyjama party on um who did the pyjama party with us last Thursday? Linda and Grace and myself. God, that was a scream. We lost the plot, Grace and me. Just couldn't stop giggling, like two irritating giggly girts in the corner. But I tell you another, I tell you what though, it was um it was so it was so healing. I haven't laughed or giggled like that for with my daughter for a long, long time. And when you know when you just can't stop. Um, I've had a couple of moments like that on my own in the shack, you know that as well, but not like that. Just the tears were just rolling down our faces. And we were trying to be serious because we knew that Linda was, you know, she. it's difficult to hold 200 and odd people in the class when you've got two giggle pots in the corner. But we had, it felt so good. It, I felt 10 years younger afterwards just from the laughter. You know, it's great. So, so sorry if we were irritating. Not sorry because it was 
laughter is such a tonic, isn't it? Don't you think? Laughter is such a tonic. I shall miss her laughter. Hmm. Very infectious giggle. <laughs> yeah. And so tomorrow night, <laughs> unfortunately, Grace won't be joining us. But Linda and I are having another run at it, and I'm in the driver's seat, and we're doing the stampy one. So I've got. A, I've got I'm going to take a break in a minute. Are you going to join? Are you going to join us? So it's, it's stamps, and I know hundreds of you have already bought the stamps. So you ought to really join in, just so you know what you're doing. Doesn't that look good now? I'm happy with this. I'm happy with this. Not sure what to do about these yet. When in doubt, hang about. <laughs> and then we've got that in there. See, the, it's got to be a bit darker in that hole, though. That hole's quite dark. Mm, but you need to leave a bit of whiteness, don't you? Otherwise... If you don't have any whiteness in there, see, I've gone a bit dark here. So I'm going to use my rubber, my pink eraser, to get rid of a little bit of the, the depth. Because otherwise, see? Yeah, got to have some contrast, highlights and lowlights. Yeah, so pyjama party tomorrow. This is going to look great. What do you think? Do you think it looks... You can't, you don't matter, does it? Do you prefer it with the black line around the outside or with no black line? I'm I'm going for the no black line around the outside. Right, break. Oh, stretch. Come on, mind your neck. Do you know when we were in London, we did 20,000 paces, 20,000 steps a day. And then I wonder why I could hardly move on Monday. <laughs> my back and my legs. It was the last time I had calves like that was when I when I was in the pyramid at Giza, climbed inside the pyramid at Giza, but you had to squat going up a hill. Has anyone done that? <laughs> and then and then I couldn't even get up the hotel stairs. It was yeah, that was that was an experience. Right, what we're we doing on um right, in, ingredients for tomorrow night. Come on, I've, I've printed them out. You can download them as well. Let me write, we'll go through them here. Well, what are we going to do first? Okay, so first of all, we're using this rose, aren't we? Come out a little bit so you can see it. So this is the rose stamp that we're using, this one. Well, it's a stamp, 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 stamp. And then, so that's that. And then I'm going to use um, one of these. Look, as if by magic, just happens to fit very perfectly. So any one of these these lino cut stamps, because we can. We're going to do. I I want to do, like, several cards. You know, like one really clean and crisp, another one a little bit more um, arty, flicky. You know, painty, not painty, inky. And then the other one really sort of looks like lino cut, but isn't. So I thought we'd, we could do that. And and I'm driving the bus. You're joining in. And Linda's joining in as well. So that'd be fun because she's, she's really um, a very clean artist, isn't she? So it'd be nice to see her and uh, how she gets on. And what we're going to use... If you if you just want to get the list, look, I'll show you. It's not bad. So the pajama party rose. That's this beautiful rose from Jane Nestorenko. Okay. And we. It would have been Jane's birthday on Saturday, so this is especially special, because it would have been Jane's birthday on Saturday. So the fact that we're having the pajama party on Friday night, and we're celebrating Jane's art. That's something, yeah, I'm glad about that. That makes me, that makes, that makes Paul and me very happy, you know. So there you go. Those are the stamps we're using. And then really, it's not so bad. If you, if you download it, look, you've got the, the Lino Grunge, you can pick anyone you like. You need a black archive, a link badge, you need a bit of stencil card, the obvious stuff. Um, some sponges, maybe some pencils if you've got the polychromos, happy days, pergolines. Just, you've got to decide. What colour do you want to make your rose? If you want to make your rose yellow, 
then you need yellowy pencils and yellowy ink and oranges and reds and that kind of family. If you want to go pinks, then you want to go, you want then a pink ink pad and pink pencils and, you know, so it's entirely up to you. I'm going, I'm going to go pinky, rose, rose. I like, I like, I like pink roses. I like yellow roses as well, though, you know. So you pick a colour that you love, all right? So there you go, sponges, pencils, a little bit of spritz of water, and then we've got um, a, paint, a little paintbrush if you've got one, a blending mat if you've got it, these grey pencils that we're using if you've got them. Um, that's just for drop shadow work. You could use an HB pencil if you haven't got that. Remember, that's what we're doing today. And then what have I got here? A selection of pink ink pads. Oh, well, it's only pink if you use if you're making a pink rose like me. It's entirely up to you. If you've got yellow, orange, red, you know, it's your family. It's your it's your rose, your colour. Okay. And then yes, yeah, so that's it really. Quite straightforward. It looks like loads, but it isn't. It's a real mainstay, essential stuff. Black ink pad colouring pencils and um, and some matching art, dye-based inks. You could use your Distress Oxides, you could use your Artistry inks, you could use your Adirondacks, your Distress inks, any of, you, any of those. There you go. So that's that. That's what we're going to do in the um, – at 7 o'clock tomorrow night in the, um, in the craft along with Linda Williams. Me here. She in Wales and you there. Isn't it wonderful technology? Hey, I think so. I think so. And then bringing it back a little bit, three o'clock, when we're doing a craft, and that's not a craft along, but you can craft along because there will be a little demo in there. Or And what we're going to do is the good people. Do you remember when we were in the shack and we did those, the good, feel good, do good, be good. Do you remember? And then we made the stamps off them. And loads of you bought them, pr not prematurely. I just told you about them, didn't I, in the shack? <laughs> and then and I was like, "Way, I, I'm wondering why we're actually we're launching them tomorrow." And it's like, "Well, everyone's already got them now." Every, uh, well, we'll see. We shall see. But the most, <laughs> I'd be very surprised if, if more, if there's anybody who hasn't got them. Right. So we've got these these little fellows, haven't we? So. So there they are printed out. Do you remember when we drew them? They were so fun to do. And you so enjoyed doing these, didn't you? And, um, and they got the masks as well now. So that's one of the best things about clarity, really, is that we can, we can take a doodle. Lucy was brilliant doing this, right? And then we turn it into wonderful products. So, and if you buy those ones, Leading up to, yeah, you get that one free. That's how it works, isn't it? And then also we, we did it. And do you know what's really amazing? Okay, even Stephen, even Stephen, we've sold exactly the same number, and I'm talking lots, hundreds, of the stamps as we did of the groovy plates. Exactly, right down the line. Usually it's more groovy, got to be honest, it's usually more groovy than stamps, and that to me makes sense because there are – thousands of we've got a lot of competition when it comes to stamps but not when it comes to groovy see so we always usually sell more groovy plates than we do stamps of the same design there you go look wunderbar so you there you go so you've got an a5 square a6 square plate and these are those nice and so i was thinking Tomorrow, I'll probably stick to the stamps, but but I've got a really nice sample, so I might get a bit of a wriggle on and do a, do a little demo with the groovy plates as well, since it's even Stephen. Okay, I think that's cool. So that's what we're doing at three o'clock, but it's more of a craft along. So it's it's not a craft along. That one's more of a, a demo led. So I might be a bit faster. Oh, I might not. <laughs> Seven o'clock is craft along pajamas, cup of tea. Yeah and get in the groove, and how to spend a lovely Friday night with like-minded people, safe in the comfort of your own home. You know, if I wasn't, if I wasn't who, if I weren't who I am, and I weren't the bus driver, if I were you, I would really enjoy, you know, I'd really enjoy doing that. 
Well, I do enjoy it, even though I am the bus driver. But to be just, to be at the hangout and doodle along with no pressure, that must be really cool. You know, I mean, I don't feel a great deal of pressure anymore either because now I feel I'm among friends, but um, this must be fun to do. I imagine, I imagine it must be fun for you. So let's have a look now. What, what have we got to do? Oh, yeah, I want to make these little beads. So I definitely need a, I'm going to use the thinner one of those. That's the 01, I think, to do the beads. And and if I, if I do it large, See, to, get, to, to make it look as if the light's hitting it, let's go into this camera. Right, let it focus, let it focus. See how they look like they've got the light hitting them? I could do a bit more on that, actually, a little bit more of a drop shadow. But um, if, for example, let's go into it, let's make it large so that you can see better what I'm doing. If that's the circle, that little thing there, then what you're going to do to get the light is you're going to leave that bit. So you're going to leave. So when you when you colour it in, you colour in this bit, but leave almost half of it white, right? And then what I do, I mean, I'm no, just like I, I don't know, you know, I only figure this out as I'm going along, I think. All right, so now I've got that, and I've got that underneath. And then what I can do is I can chop away at it. See, so I chop away, take a look at it. Does it, is it doing the job yet? Mm, maybe chop away a little bit more. See, when it's tiny like that, you won't have to chop away much, but the trick is to stay near the edge. So when you're, when you're cutting it, cutting in, cut in from the, see, don't cut from there. So it's in the middle. Just keep cutting until you go, yeah, now that looks like a, now it looks like light. Okay. I'm cool with that. See, then you stop. And then you know, right, your light's all right. It, it, leave half of it white and then just keep chopping away at it. All right? Well, that's what I do anyway. And I need to lean on that to do this. And I'm going to bring, mm, yeah, see, black, okay. Bring that line in there. So this is going to be the little chain. I might, I'll leave that one for a minute. I'm, I haven't decided yet. And then we're going to leave that half white like that. Just colour in the bottom half. And then come around the top. Just leave that bit white. Right, so there, because I made a mistake. See, this is going to be a bit harder. Right, that'll do. And then half, do the bottom half, and then come around the top half what i tended the reason that i do this is because what i found was i wasn't leaving enough area especially on little beads and that see that one's too dark at the top see what i mean i know but you get what i mean when you see it the second one ends a bit ropey see but the first the third and the fourth that's about right get it so so then what you can do is because they're so small, there's not much, there's not much really to eliminate now. That'll do. And then to get the, the actual the three-dimensional effect on this, take your pencil. Take your pencil. And actually, let's do this with a pen with a grey pencil. And then what we're going to do is put a bit of shadow on the underneath, on the undercarriage, like there because then that really looks like it's popping then. That bit there, see? Get a darker pencil so you can see it better. Oh, that's a sharp one. That'll do. There. So you just carousel underneath, like that. Gently does it. You can always add it. It's not so easy to take it away. There, see? And then it looks like it's, it's cool. Have a look. Yeah. <laughs> and if you think you've overcooked it, get your little red rubber out as you do. See, that looks quite good, you know, for a 3D thing. And then you can go in with your pencil once you've got it and then really make it black. There we are. 
Yeah, nice, eh? So up close. And you may say, well, that's a little bit anal. It's a little bit attention to detailish, Barbara, a bit obsessive. But the thing is, this whole exercise is an exercise in mindful practices. It's like it's like a form of meditation. It's like a form of meditation. It's to me it is it doesn't matter what I'm doing. It's the fact that I'm doing it and I'm aware that I'm doing it. It's that awareness, isn't it? See? So then I'm taking that gray and I'm just adding that bit there. This is going to be so nice. And I could titivate and, and add a little bit of shadow and work on this until I hit the sweet spot. And then suddenly it goes, oh, I love it. And you know that it's just perfect. But every stroke, and I know this sounds, again, it sounds a bit like, why would you waste so much time just doing a little dot or a doodle? Or a, but it's, it is the process. It's the process, friends. That's what it is. It's, it's lovely to get a good result as well. And it's not that I'm a perfectionist when I'm doing this. It's not that. It isn't that at all. If I really concentrate on, on the detail, like real attention to detail, the more I concentrate on every stroke of the pencil or pen, every dot and dash, it keeps me so focused on the tip of the pen that I can't, I'm a, I completely forget about everything because all I'm focused or concentrating on is getting the lines right. Do you see? And that, to me, is the essence of... Yeah, see how it looks like it's just lying there. Because not only did you get a really good result, but in, in doing this, this is how I see this, right? In doing this, let me come in a bit closer. What you're doing is you're giving yourself a really, it's like a massage for the mind. And it's, it's just slowing your thinking down. It's distracting you massively, especially if you're really, really concentrating on, on every single stroke rather than just go, all right, this bit needs to be dark, so I'm going to go dark, 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 dark. And then you just rattle around. But I'll do that stroke, and then I'll look at it, and I'll think, I want to do another one? Okay. You know, I'm not going to do it plow through all the depth and then go, mm, too much, got to take it away again. If you do one stroke at a time, there you go. And then stop and look. Do you want to do a bit more? See, this could do with a little bit more here. So come on then, hands up. Who's joining us? In the for the pajama party tomorrow night, seven o'clock, Facebook Live. Hands up. Who's got the gear? Who's ready to rock and roll? Anybody? This looks so nice. See? I think I was right in suggesting that we don't use a black pen. I mean, it's so dark now. I keep going, <clears throat> I keep going darker and darker on this edge. So it's almost like asking me, why don't you just use a black pen? But it's the difference. There's a difference between black and gray, for sure. Look, see what I mean? It's good, isn't it? We did all that today. 
if you go over the black ink, the black ink, this bit, with a grey pencil, like a polychromo, it shows. See, because they are, they are, aren't they? they? They're opaque. If you do that and you don't like it, you can it, take it out, you know, from the black. You can eliminate it. If it's gone a bit shiny around your black hair and you're not keen on it, you can either do that or you can reintroduce a layer of black ink. You could go back in at the end and just, see, just add another layer. Because these paint pens, they work over the top of the, get what I mean? If you feel, oh, it's gone a little bit shiny because of the grey, the pencils, either rub them out or go back in and get that opacity, that total black. Yeah, that's pretty good, Barbara. What have I missed? I know. My favourite thing to do, the shading underneath to get that 3D effect. If, you, if you're doing this on paper, it's cool. You're going to get the effect. You're certainly going to get the relaxation and the, you're going to get all that. But if you fancy having a go on stamp board, treat yourself because it really is It's quite something to stamp on it and doodle on it and colour on it. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, let's have a look. I'm sure I've got some here. Hang on a minute. Right. I put it out because I thought, I want to show you this. So we've got, we've got these shapes. See, stamp board shapes. We've got hearts, squares, circles, and triangles. So that comes in a, in a bag. Right, you can get them individually. And then it, within the bag, uh, in the assortment, you've got hearts. I'll show you. You've got hearts, circles, triangles, which are brilliant, uh, bunting, and squares. So you've got the four different shapes there. Okay. I think there's, they're really inexpensive. You get so much. You get a lot of bang for your buck with these. And, um, and you can see... For example, you've got three different sizes, but then you get five of each different size. So you get 15 of the triangles, 15 of the squares, 15 of the hearts, 15 of the circles. And what we've used here, what I've been using, is one of those. See the back. But they're double-sided. So that you could, the, there is a front and a back, but you can only, not from the texture, only from the, the way it's been die cut, you can see that there's definitely, it's rounded on the front and it's a little bit more squared up on the back where it's been cut, so it's been die cut out. Um, so you've got double-sided. I started another one, let me show you. Look, this is one that I'm working on at the moment. And it's not, it's not even something that we need to do together. It's just, I have it sitting here and when I'm trying to think of something, or I'm trying to make a plan or clear my mind, this is this is the one I'm going to. And then I just put little dots in, put little dashes in. So there's a lot of work still to do on that one. And to be honest, I would probably, if I were going to do it with you, I'd use the smaller triangle. I'd go, I'd go one number smaller than that. This is but the but this for me is when I'm trying to process something you know this is it helps me so much doodling don't you find when like I, I always did it when I was in meetings or when I was at school I was always doodling down the it, even yesterday we were having meetings about loads of stuff really important stuff at work and making the most of grace being here and and I was sitting listening and I was doodling and it's it's almost uh it's, it's not because I'm not listening it's because I am listening and it's like clearing the channels or something. That's funny. But but yeah, so so the stamp board's worth worth having a look at, you know, especially if you want to make maybe do beautiful doodle presents or coasters. You know, nice. Very, very nice they are to work with. So let's have a look. What have we got? There we are. We've done that's the one I did as a go-to, and this is the one that we've done together. I quite like that, you know, but I could, I could keep going on that. I could go for hours. I'm going to, I'm going to do the outside. It'd be really interesting to see what you, whether you want to do something around the outside as well. I don't know, you know, sometimes less is more, isn't it? 
Hey, let's do. I've got two holes now. <laughs> cool, huh? Nice. Real good optical illusion. So next week, we're going to get together again on Thursday. And I tell you what I was going to suggest, if it's up, if you're cool with this next week, I was thinking that it might be a really nice idea to get one of our postcards out again. I'm going to go with the Marina Fed Tova. Let me just grab it to show you so that you know where we're headed next week. I'm sure I've got them here somewhere. This is me, not organized, but I'm just, let me just have a look. There are Marina Fedotova postcards, all right? There are three different sets. Honestly, it's, it's, it's quite overwhelmingly messy in here right now. I don't know where they are. I've got the, oh, here they are. All right, cool. Well, it's not that overwhelmingly messy, then, is it? Right, so we've got these Marina Fedotova postcards. We've got the whimsy, the flower, and the Christmas. Right, and I was thinking that we would take one of these. Nice. Okay, and we'll do some really nice coloring. I've got a couple of tricks up my sleeve, and I think I'll go to, I'll go to the whimsy ones. Let me go to the whimsy ones. The whimsy or the flowers or the Christmas. Oh no, I don't know which one. No, I'm gonna keep the Christmas to closer to Christmas, and I think the whimsy would be good. Should we do the whimsy one? Yeah, come on, let's do a whimsy one. Don't it? Yeah. Let's do a whimsy one. They're great, you know, because they come in two different sizes, and I like that. See, I'm looking at that one with a little frog, and I'm thinking, no, oh, that's where we've got to go. Hole. So, yeah, really cute, really nice for coloring in. And what's lovely is, because we only meet – well, here, I nearly fell off my chair then. Because we only meet once a week, you see, this will be perfect because next week we can do the large one and we'll do beautiful colouring in. And then the following week we'll do the doodly one, which is the smaller one, and then we can create the background. So that's that's quite a nice thing to do. I, I think you'll enjoy that. Okay. So hopefully you've got the pop-it postcards. All right. And then and then that'll give me time. Because I really like this optical illusion doodling. I think it's quite nice, and especially it's simple. You know, and we said, didn't we, that we're gonna create, we're gonna keep the shack shack simple and not get too technical, like where we where we ended up with um with our a Camelot, and we've done that, we've enjoyed it, and should we go into lockdown again, and should we be meeting three to four to five times a week again, you know, and circling the wagons, then I'd say right. We could we can do a larger project like that again, but once a week it would take us. We'd be on the same thing for three months, wouldn't we? <laughs> okay, so there you go. I love you and I'll leave you, Paul. Thank you very much for your for your help as well, and uh, and I really look forward. I'm just looking what Paul said. Yeah, um, I really look forward to joining um, joining you in in the um, for a pajama party tomorrow. And don't forget at three o'clock tomorrow. We could even do a little craft along. If you've got the good stamps, I've got a couple of really nice projects that I want to share with you, and I'll just give you a couple of tips and tricks then too. Okay, thanks very much for joining me, and uh, have a lovely day. The sun's shining here. I'm going to go and find those cats. Bye-bye now. Lots of love.